Meteor Client has updated to 1.21. So to get Meteor, you want to head over to their official website, MeteorClient.com. This is going to be linked down in the description below, together actually with my Discord server, and I'd greatly appreciate it if you could join that. Anyways, here under the Downloads tab, you'll see that there is a dev build for 1.21. If by the time you're watching this, this means that you might encounter bugs. If by the time you're watching this, there is a full release for 1.21, then I highly recommend you download that. For right now though, we can click on that button, and as you can see, the download will start in just a few seconds. Now to use Meteor for 1.21, you do actually need to have Fabric installed. If you don't have that, or you're not sure where to get it, then I will link it down in the description below. Anyways, here as you can see in my downloads, I have Meteor Client. What I can do now is press on Windows and R at the same time. Then in the little box that pops up, I can type in App Data, just like so. Then hit Enter or click on OK, and that is going to open up this folder right here. You want to go into the folder called Roaming, dot Minecraft, then you might need to scroll down a little until you find the Mods folder. In there, you simply want to drag Meteor Client, just like so. Now that Meteor Client is in there, we can close both of these, open up the Minecraft launcher, and launch Fabric for 1.21. Now as you can see, I'm playing Fabric 1.21 and Meteor Client is active. I'll now head into a Minecraft world and show you how to use this. As you can see, I've now loaded into a Minecraft world, and I'll briefly show you how to get started with this client. If you want a full in-depth tutorial on everything about Meteor, then I will link that down in the description below. Anyways, to get started, you want to press on right shift, and as you can see, that is going to open up what is known as the Click GUI. Right here, you will find all of the utilities that this client has. You can click on them just like this to turn them on, and click on them just like that once again to turn them off. You'll notice that they've been turned on if they have just a slight bit of highlight, as you can see. Now, do keep in mind that in some of them, for example, the Render tab, you can scroll a little, so don't miss out on that. Now for all of these utilities, you can also actually right click on them just like so. Here in this little bit of a customization menu that pops up, you can mark the utilities as a favorite and it'll show up in such a section. As you can see, we now have a favorite section. In this menu as well, for most of them, you can actually set a keybind too. For example, for this auto sign utility, I can set the bind of F, for example. As you can see, I'll get a confirmation of that in chat, which I can toggle on and off right over there. Anyways, I'll reset that for right now because I don't necessarily want to keep that bind. You can press on escape to close out of there, and as you can see, some of them will have more customization than others. Anyways, moving on, you can also actually hover above them and it will give you a brief description if you don't know what it is, but most of these utilities should be pretty self-explanatory. You'll also get the description right over here when you right click. Anyways, we also have a config area. Here you can change the general config of the client. As you can see, currently other everything is our usual purple, which is the default color, but you can of course change that if you do wish to do so. Here we have the GUI, which is the general user interface. Here, once again, a lot of customization options if you do want to use those. The HUD, um, this is a pretty interesting one. I definitely recommend that you check this out. This is basically your heads up display. In normal Minecraft, this would be your um, hotbar, your health, maybe your hunger as well, how much armor you have on think all that stuff. Here in this area you can set a bind to turn on or off the meteor specific HUD. As you can see right here, I have a couple things on my screen already. I have the meteor client information, my frames, ping, speed, my coordinates down here as well, which is all really useful. Here, you have an edit button, which allows me to, as you can see, drag around all the elements of the heads up display. These will actually snap as well, which is of course great. I can right click just like so, and I'll get this add HUD element thing, where I can search for elements to add to the heads up display. 
As you can see, there's a whole list of a bunch of them here. I can, for example, add my game mode. As you can see, I now have a little thing that displays my game mode. And I can move this to basically wherever I want on the screen. Of course, you can also delete things. You can just simply use the delete key on your keyboard to remove them, just like that. It's actually going to be off by default, and you can turn it on just like this. With this active button pressed, I can close out of here, as you can see, in Minecraft, and we will have all of these things on screen. I just deleted some things earlier, but I can go back over here, reset to default elements, and they'll be back once again, as you can see. So, definitely a really useful thing, you can get a bunch of really neat information to show up on your screen this way. Moving on to the friends menu, this just simply allows you to set f internal friends with me to your client. In the macros area, you can create, manage, and edit macros, and in the profiles area, this allows you to basically create profiles. If you're not sure what a profile is, basically in the modules area, which we saw earlier, I can set custom settings and maybe toggle on or off a bunch of these utilities. Once I have it set in a certain way, then I can actually save that to a profile, load and manage different profiles for different situations, which is really useful and it's a feature that a lot of clients have. Anyways, I can close out of here because that's actually not all and Meteor Client also has another great feature. We saw earlier that something showed up in chat, as you can see, and basically Meteor Client has commands. Similar to how you would, for example, use slash give in normal Minecraft, we replace the slash with a dot. The dot is the command prefix. I can type in dot help, and as you can see, that's going to give me a list of all of the commands, which in this case, there's 38 of them. You can hover above them as you probably saw, and you'll see a the little bit of the description and how to type in the command. So for damage, I can type in .damage or .dmg, right? And what it does is, it damages yourself. For example, I can take the .bind command, which allows me to bind a specific module to the next pressed key. Let's say I don't really know how to use it still, I can simply type .bind in chat just like this, and as you can see, all of these commands do have autofill, which is really, really useful. As you can see, I can now autofill a specific utility that I can set a keybind to. I'll just take reach as an example over here. As you can see, there's no further arguments, so I can simply click on enter, and I can press on K, for example, and now it has been bound to K. Anyways, basically, that was that. If you do have any more questions, then of course, do feel free to leave those down in the comments below. The full in-depth tutorial is also linked in the description if you don't want to miss on if you don't want to miss out on anything. Anyways, for right now though, thank you ever so much for watching, and I do hope to see you again in the next one. Bye-bye.